Democrats uh, nationwide are going to have to explain themselves in the morning uh, if these numbers in Virginia hold as to, okay, what has to change over the course of the next 365 days to prevent a true red wave from not just sweeping Virginia. We, we seem to be en route to a red wave in Virginia if these numbers hold. But nationally, President Biden, Vice President Harris, Speaker Pelosi, Senator Schumer, they're going to have to ask themselves, is there anything that can be changed in the next 12 months to prevent a red wave from sweeping over Congress in the 2022 midterm elections? We talked about this earlier. You're going to hear a lot of Democrats from outside Virginia say uh, that the Virginia race isn't that important, but that's the exact opposite of what they were saying 24 hours ago. It's why former President Barack Obama held a rally in central Virginia. It's why uh, President Biden campaigned there multiple times uh, for Terry McAuliffe, who uh, we're keeping an eye on uh, Democratic uh, HQ, Terry McAuliffe HQ, seen as Jeff Zelaney just tweeting out uh, his sources telling him that uh, Terry McAuliffe is en route uh, and pr- is expected to address uh, his supporters in 10 minutes or so. So we'll keep an eye on that. Of course, we're all looking at these numbers uh, very closely. And what we're seeing is a shift, a shift we've talked about a lot tonight. Dr. Bob, uh, the best in Virginia politics, breaking this down, has helped us understand the importance of Chesterfield. I want to talk about a county we don't usually talk about, Bill. How about Goochland County, right? Four years ago, Goochland County, about 6,500 or so votes for Ed Gillespie. Gillespie. Tonight, over 8,800 votes. Yes, it's a smaller county. Goochland doesn't get a ton of attention on election nights like that. But you saw that that's a 2,000-vote pickup in one county for Republicans, for Glenn Youngkin. And he replicated that across a lot of rural Virginia tonight, offsetting high Democratic voter voting areas such as the city of Richmond, such as Fairfax County uh, up north. So uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of spin is about to begin uh, following uh, this result, if and when we get a concession or a projection. But as of now, it remains uh, a good night to be a Republican. And Joe, everybody's talking about next year's uh, congressional elections, the off-year elections, uh, taking this night as a harbinger, perhaps, or things that have to change if the Democrats are going to uh, have a different result than they appear to be getting tonight. But in two years, we'll have Senate elections along with the House elections again. So in a sense, there's a lot that's going to be happening here in Virginia just within the state. And really, you know, Bill... Sometimes uh, we in Washington sometimes overread some things. I think if you, if you really watched and followed the Glenn Youngkin campaign very closely, he focused a lot on hyper-local issues, right? Focused on grocery taxes, focused on school boards. He attempted to really localize this election. So what does that perhaps tell me as someone who watches this for a living is that you're going to see a lot of focus on education and schools perhaps heading into the 2022 midterms. Um, But we shall see. People watching, streaming us at home on WTVR.com right now or or one of our other other sources, ask yourself, how did you vote? What drove you to the polls? Was it the economy? Was it the pandemic? Was it Washington, D.C. policies? Uh, Was it What happened with your child in in their school district? Uh, That is going to be the dissection, the the, the autopsy, if you will, of this election to see what went wrong for Democrats and what went right for Republicans.